I'm joined on Gearbox today by Josh from the Cream Production Services. Josh, welcome to the show. Thank you. So um, this is your new toy. Yes, it is. We have here a uh, Midas Pro 2C, correct? That is right. Okay, now give us the rundown on the desk. How many inputs, outputs, okay, buses and so on? We've got 56 input processing channels, uh, 48 of which are on the stage box itself with 16 out. We've got eight mic line in on the console as well as eight line out, uh, as well as a variety of local monitor and master output options and a few AES options too. Okay, cool. So plenty of I.O. For, um, for, for both local and remote rack options. What sort of distance can you have on the, on the stage rack? Uh, it's the, we've got the standard 100 metre rolls that Midas supply you with. Okay, um, so that's probably more than enough for most people. Yeah, definitely okay. more than enough. Cool. Now, as far as mix buses go, 16 auxiliaries and 8 matrixes, plus left, centre, right. But you can also do uh, surround modes as well, can't you? Yes, you can. You can do 5.1 surround sound with the console as well. Uh, not only that with the mix buses, but you've got the options of a stereo mix bus, a mono mix bus, a fixed group, or you can even do a mix minus, which is ultra handy if you're doing a broadcast feed. Yeah, it's, um, mix minus is not something we generally see a lot of on most of the consoles we see. Um, so that's pretty cool. Now, in terms of operation, it looks to me a lot like a Pro 6 or a Pro 9, like you've got your little pop groups and so on. Uh, Fundamentally, it's not that different, is it? No, no, it's it's exactly the same. It just has less surface area. Now there um, is, there's a ex eight channels more version as well, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, the the Pro Two has an extra bank of eight on the left hand side. Uh, you don't gain any extra processing or channels. You just get an extra eight control faders. So it's just a bit more easily accessible yeah basically absolutely. okay but with your pop groups and stuff you you're yeah. doing pretty well to start with your with pop anyone. groups and your vcas when you select them it brings up the channels that are assigned to that thus you don't need as many faders to see okay cool now another nice little thing i've just sort of noticed is on both the console and also the stage rack you've got dual power supplies yeah it's great um it's probably the only major redundancy options they've given you on the pro 2 um the way they've made it that fit the price range they have they've taken out a lot of the redundancy options but there still are some like the the dual power supplies and you can even run an extra line of the core so that if one drops out you've still got a backup it'll figure it out and bounce yeah, across absolutely. okay now your core is aes 50 yes yes that's correct okay so it's running on on so Cat5 cable, yep. and you've each, got... Each line will give you 24 up, 24 down. Okay, and that's running at what sample rate? 96k. Okay. That's a fixed 96, you can't drop it any lower. All right, cool. Um, as far as uh, onboard processing and stuff goes, you've got a number of different options you can set up the console with, uh, if, if you're doing sort of a front of house kind of situation versus monitors, you can have more graphics and so on. Yeah, um, absolutely. How many graphics and things can you have? Uh, at the moment, most of the time we'll set it up with 16 graphics or and four effects units, or you can swap around. I think for every effects unit you drop, you gain four graphics. Okay, cool. So there's there's or more. Or vice versa. You've basically you've got enough to have a graphic on every output, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, uh, and I think you've still got one effect in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. And even then, you've still got six parametrics on every output, so you probably don't need it. So if you can't do it on a parametric, there's something wrong. <laughs> Um, you've got uh, a couple of options for in internal onboard effects as well. Yep, that's right. I was talking to you earlier, you quite like the effects? Yeah, I think the, the onboard effects sound great. Um, they give you a lot of options with it. You can do whatever you want with them, really. Uh, what they've done is they've taken a, a heap of analog effects, said, this is what we want. Uh, and they've had a live guy or a studio guy turn around and said, mm, your algorithms haven't quite worked right. This is how it should be. This change is this, different. change this, and they've changed the coding. To so, suit. so the, it's basically you've got replicas of, of real world gear. Yeah, absolutely. In a digital domain. Yep. Okay, nice. Um, plenty of I/O on the back, which is really nice. So you can mm -hmm. you can run your output straight off the back. Um, you've also got quite a good monitor section here. I'm noticing you've got a couple of monitor outputs and things, um, and so obviously you can do tone generators and all yeah, that kind absolutely. of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, as well as that, you've got the, the two monitor outputs, A and B, 
uh, both locally there and you can also assign them to your stage track if you so desire. Mm -hmm. EQs, dynamics, you've got, you've got sort of fairly standard runner stuff on, on every channel. Yeah, you've got a gate, a comp, uh, four band parametric plus high and low pass filters with variable slopes. You can flick between 12 dB and 24 dB. Okay, cool. Um, I guess the last question is, how's it sound? Phenomenal. You, you've taken it out on a few gigs? Yeah, I've taken it out on a number of gigs now. Uh, you put it behind the PA and it's a completely different sounding PA. Different animal. It huh? is amazing, the difference it makes. Wow. Well, there you go. It's the Midas Pro 2C. Thanks, Josh. That's it. Thank you. Cheers.